عن ابي هريره رضي الله عنه السكت حديث الحديث السادس عن ابي هريره رضي الله تعالى عنه ان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال اذا شرب الكلب في اناء احدكم فليغسله سبعا ولمسلم اولاهن بتراب ده مسجد صلى الله عليه وسلم سال اذا شرب if it drinks الكلب if a dog drinks في اناء in a well or vessel احدكم one of you guys vessel your, your utensils ها فليغسله once wash it سبعا seven times ولمسلم and in the wedding امام مسلم اولاهن بتراب let the first one be the sand وله في حديث عبد الله بن مغفل and in the hadith of عبد الله بن مغفل the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said اذا ولغ الكلب if the dog ها huh? you, you guys know what the dog does with his tongue Ha, wulug. What's it in English? If he uses his tongue and uh, puts it in your vessel, and the word wulug in the Arabic language is the correct wording. Inshallah, we're going to come to it. Not the word shariba. A dog doesn't drink. Shariba is used for the human. Waliga is uh, is what's used for the dog. And a walaga is when he he wobbles his tongue inside the vessel to drink it. Fagsiluhu sabban. Wash it seven times. Waafiruhu thamina tabitturab. And on the eighth time, use sand. On the eighth, so the first hadith said, f- um, uh, "Let the first one be, let the first one be um, the sand." And the next hadith of Abdullah Mughaffal is said, "Let the eighth one be the sand." We will mention how to bring those together. The hadith first of all was narrated by Abu Huraira, and we he mentioned his biography previously. And the hadith is collected by Bukhari in Kitab al-Tahara. Also, Imam Muslim in Kitab al-Tahara. In Kitab al-Tahara. As for the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mughaffal, huh? and Imam al-Bukhari narrated, uh, Imam, sorry, Imam Muslim narrated in his sahih. Bukhari did not narrate Abdullah ibn Mughaffal's hadith. Zarkashi rahimahullah, he said, al-hadith of Abi Hurairah, إِذَا لَغِيبَ الْكَلْبُ فِي إِنَا يَحَدِكُمْ فَلْيَغْسِرُهُ سَبْعًا He brought that the wording of Bukhari that says Shariba, Muslim didn't bring that narration. Huh? Except with Bukhari. Mm-hmm. So, the correct word that the scholars of Hadith had said is, um, and Zarkashi mentions in the Kitab al Nukat ala Umdatul Hakam, which is, Walaga. And he said, Wahu al Yarifu Halulugah. The people of the language, they know the word Walaga, the dog to do that, and not the word Shariba. That's what they know. Okay. The second hadith is narrated by Abdullah who? Abdullah ibn Mughaffal. Abdullah ibn Mughaffal, his name is Abdullah ibn Mughaffal ibn Ubaid ibn Nahm ibn Afif al Muzani. He is from Muzaynat al Mudar. He is from the Ashabu al Shajara. He is from the companions who done the bay'ah with the Prophet in the, under the tree. And he is from the Fuqaha that Umar ibn Khattab sent out to, the, to Basra. To teach the people fiqh. He lived there, stayed there, remained there, and he was one of the scholars who used to consistently cry. He was known for his excessive crying in Basra. He was a companion, and his father was also a companion, and he died the year 57 Hijriyah. This hadith deals with how should one purify and clean the dirt and the filth of the dog. How should one of us uh, deal with it? Um, <clears throat> As we all know, which is also now, recently, doctor and, uh, doctors have said the germs that the, the, the saliva, the, the germs that are in the mouth of the dog, and how much it is, Islam had found out 1,400 and something years ago. The dirt, the, 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 the germs in which the dog carries on his, in his saliva. Islam had found out um, and, and the Sharia has t- mentioned to us 1,400 and something years ago. And as we could see brothers, uh, Islam is a religion of tahara, purity, cleanliness, clean. The fiqh in the hadith. At-taghlidu fi najasat al-kalb. The hadith shows us how 
the Sharia ah is very staunch and tough regarding the filth and the impurity of the dog. And it's from the animals which are disliked, who carry a lot of illnesses and a lot of awsakh, um, which is a lot of germs and dirt and filth on his mouth. Mm -hmm. Two, اختلف أهل أهل العلم the people of knowledge they disputed هل يلحق بقية أعضاء الكلب is the other part of the dog's body the same ruling as its mouth does it take the, does it take the same ruling for example كيده his hand and its legs its tail does it take the same ruling as its uh, mouth This khilaf goes back to the pers, the people who believe the reason why the dog's mouth was made haram, the illa, the reason is where this issue comes from. Some of the ulama they said the reasoning of why the dog was said to be clean, to be for us to clean ourselves from it is why? Because of the tenajus, tenjis, the filth and the impurity which he carries. Those scholars who believe that, they said the same as his body. The same thing as his body, and he also has the impurity that he carries with it. And they said, if we think about it, the most honorable part of your body is your mouth. So if the rolling of your mouth is najasa, then the rest of your body, it takes the same rolling. The second view which is that the issue is not um, due to the issue of najasa and whatnot. And that it is based upon evidence from the Quran and this is all it is. There is no wisdom of we don't understand the reason why it is prohibited from us. And this is specifically mentioned because the evidence clearly just mentions this. And that has got nothing to do with purity or impurity. It doesn't have anything to do with it. And that it is um, just a hukum shar'i, Islamic legislation. Just the same way where Dhuhr is four and, and Fajr is two. Hikmah behind it, you don't know. I said that. But the illah of saying that it's najas is stronger. Stronger. And Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, as Muhammad Nasr al-Marwazi narrated on an authentic chain of narration, he says, he said, بِأَنَّ الْغُسْلَ مِنْ وُلُوغِ الْكَلْبِ بِأَنَّهُ رِجْسِ The reasoning why the dog, his tongue or its mouth in which we have to clean ourselves, our vessels or whatever he does it on, huh, is due to what? It is due to its rijs, it's filthy, it's um, impure, it's impure, impurity. And when Abdullah ibn Abbas said this, no Sahabi had opposed him in this issue, so this falls under the ijma' of the Sahabas. And Abdullah ibn Abbas said it, and when he said it, no one opposed him. <coughs> now, Standing on the issue of the ijma' of the Sahabas, brothers, we have to really understand. Anyone who tells you that the ijma' of ijma' al sukuti there's khilaf in it, he doesn't know that there's he doesn't know usul and he doesn't know qawaid al fiqiyah. He does have he has no knowledge. He should fear Allah in what he says. The ijma' of the Sahabas, or the ijma' generally, is two types, as we said. Ijma' which is sarih. Every person we have a word from him. He said this, he said this, he said this, he said this. All of the Sahabas will hear something from them. We look at it, they all said, said, said. They all said that. This is Sarih, direct. That ijma', there is no khilaf that that ijma' should be, that, that ijma can, should be opposed. Wadah. The other one is what people start to be khilaf of. And say that the second type of ijma', which is ijma' al sukuti which is one or two people will say something, and that speech, we have no other people going against it. And then from that, the scholar said that that, ijma, that silence is a sign of acceptance. Because the Sahabas are known not to oppose one another in a matter 
sorry, not to just be silent about a matter which they don't agree with. One Sahabi would have said, I don't agree, he's, cor- he's incorrect in this issue. You with me? And the reason why they all went silent. Some scholars said this Ijma'u al-Sukut he is very weak. Now, nadar, with looking into it deeply, no, the scholars only disputed if that Ijma' did not go off, did not go on for a period of time. Yes, they said that this Ijma' maybe the others didn't hear it. Lakin if it's a tatawul, time had gone by, qarnan ba'da qarn, generations after generation, then the speech of this Sahabi has been heard. Yay. It's been heard. And it's been going on. And no one opposed it. This is Ijma' al Sukuti. So he said this. The re- remaining Tabi'in, no one opposed him. Well, I tabi Tabi'in, no one opposed him. The Sahabas, when he had said this, time went on. No one opposed him. By this, the ulama, they said, this is Ijma' al Sukuti. The silence is a sign of acceptance from the other Sahabas. They agreed with it. There was no need for them to do, huh? Correction on this issue or prove their stance regarding regarding it. Regarding it. The third hadith, which is some of the narrations they have come if that dog does that to the cup or the water and there's there's water or milk or something inside it, that, that milk or that water in it should be poured out poured. And spilt, which is bi'iraqati, bi'iraqati ma fil ina. Whatever's in that vessel should be poured out. That is according to the hadith of Imam Muslim narrated in his Sahih. The chain of narration is Ali ibn Mashar, who narrated from A'mash, Ali Abi Salih, or Abi Razin, who, who narrated from Abu Huraira. But here the thing is, laki lam yutaba alayha. No one had followed up this, this narration in this way with, with, the narrator of the hadith and Ali ibn Mashar. Ali ibn Mashar, who's in the chain of narration, this particular wording is Sahih Muslim, in which he said, which is, فَلْيُرْقِهِ Let him pour. No one said it with him. Meaning the other people who narrated this hadith of Abu Huraira, who were the students of A'mash, Sulaiman ibn Mahran, and Mahran students are known, like Muawiyah and Sha'bah. None of them narrated the word, فَلْيُرْقِهِ Let him pour it. And this is considered what? Shadh. This is Shadh, which is a mukhalafa, opposition. All of the other students of A'mash who narrated the hadith from him, like Muawiyah and Shu'bat ibn Hajjaj, they all not, didn't add that word to it. The only student of A'mash, Sulaiman ibn Mahran, who narrated this wording is Ali ibn Mashar. So what they're going to say is Ali ibn Mashar, his riwayah is Shadh. Are you with me? Some of the other ulama, they took another view. Huh? They took another view, which is like Imam al-Dara Qutni, rahimahullah, and Ibn Mulaqin in his kitab, Badr al-Munir. He said no. He said no. Ibn Mulaqin, <coughs> rather, he put a footnote on the, the people who weakened the hadith by saying that this is his only single narration. He said, فَإِنَّ عَلِي بْنُ مَسْهَرْ First of all, Ali ibn Mas'har, he's an imam al-hafud al-mutqin. He is a hafud, a scholar, a noble individual. Who is hived and his memory mutafakul alayhi is, is agreed upon. Also, his adala, his justness is also agreed upon. And to use him as an evidence is very well known. I mean, you can use him. Yeah, you can use him. So, his additional word he added to it is not going to be, it won't fall under the category of shadah, it will fall under the category of ziyadah thiqah. Ziyadah thiqah is when a reliable individual adds something to a chain of narration. And there is that thin line between what is Ziyadah to Thiqa and Shaz because they, they are very hard to distinguish between the two. Anyway, the hadith Imam Dara Qutni he said the hadith is Hassan and also Iraqi in his kitab uh, Tarhu Tathrib. The fourth benefit that we get from the hadith is the washing, the washing has to be done immediately. As soon as the dog does that, the person has to wash it immediately. And this issue of which is halil amru, does the order in the sharia, does it benefit for? This is, a, this is an issue that discussed in usul al-fiqh. Which is what? When the sharia, the kitab or the sunnah order you to do something, do you have to do it straight away? You see the, the research that what has been said, which is al-amru hal yaqtadil fawriya. 
Does the Amar or does it show a Tarakhi? You can delay it. Is it your choice? Huh? Is it your choice? <laughs> Number five. Al Ghusl Yakulu Sab'an. The washing is seven. We also benefit, the fiqh that we benefit from the hadith, number five, is al-ghusl yakunu sab'an. That the washing is, is done seven. Number six. Ikhtalafa fi ghaslihi tartib. Number six. There occurred a dispute and a khilaf in this hadith in the order of how the washing should be done. Some of the word, some of the riwayat, some of the chains of narration, it says, Ula hunna. The first should be what? Sand. And this is the majority of the narrations. Some says, Akhiruhunna, the last one. And some also it says, which is the third riwayah, Ihdahunna, one of them. Does it say the first nor the beginning? At the end. It just says one of them should be sand. So we have three wordings. One that says the first. And that's the majority. Some that says the last. Which is not that much, but they're chains that say that. And the third which he says, one of them should be sand. One of them should be sand. Um, the strongest issue, the strongest is, and the str uh, uh, most convincing is, the one that says, Ula hunna bitturab. The first should be sand. For two reasons. First one is, the wurudu riwayatul ula, the first narration being Abu Huraira's narration, came in two chains, two meth, two, two tariqah, two paths, two ways. And they, these two, is more in number than the other number. So it's, it's larger in quant like number. The second one is, if we say, Make the seventh one, which is the last one, make that the sand, huh? Make that the sand, then it would need another washing after it. You can't leave a sand in a vessel or utensil. It needs another washing, correct? So there's always going to be, you, would you have something, sand inside it? You wash it, wash it, and you put sand in it. The answer is, no, it won't be. So for those two reasons, it seems like the first one should be uh, the strongest one. So you wash it seven times, and the last one is what? Sorry, the f you wash it, the first time you do it with what? Sand, and then after that you wash it seven times. Number seven. حُكْمُ النَّجَاسَةِ يَتَعَدَّ عَنْ مَحَلِّهَا إِلَى مَا يُجَاوِزَ بِالشَّرْطِ أَنْ يَكُونَ مَائِعًا That the najasa can transmit. The najasa can transmit from its place to something that is neighboring to it or something else in which it comes into contact with like the dog the mouth of it is najasa and its najasa had moved from his mouth onto something else and that the najasa can ha that, that can happen huh something is najas that doesn't mean it's only najas on the mouth of the of, of the uh, dog so it remains there no. if he touches something with his mouth also takes the same rolling as it number eight تنجيس المائعا إذا وقع في جزء منها نجاسة. Sorry, what did I say? Number? Number eight. Number eight, right? الحديث يعم جميع الكلاب. The hadith encompasses all the dogs. So you can't say a chihuahua huh, is not a dog that can is 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 the it's a it's a it's a German Shepherd. That's the only one. Hey, let any dog. No. If it's a dog, it's a dog. Um, eight, nine. Nothing can take the place of the sand, and this is the view of the Jumhur of Ahlul Ilm. And the, the, the choosing of the sand is an Amr min Allah. You're not allowed to use anything else. You can't see. Say, I'm going to use soap. I'm going to use detergent. 
I'm going to use this. Use it if you want, no problem. You can be safe if you want. But you have to bring Turab. As Ibn Taqiq mentions in the Kitab, Ihkam al Ahkam, he says, Bit Turabi yaktadi ta'yu. It shows that it's pinpointed by the Prophet. <coughs> so that's dust that sand has to come and you have to use it. Now, he said, Wala yaqum al Ashnan was sabun, Makam al Turabi ala al Asahi. Soap. Huh? And it, all these stuff that people use, they don't take the position of the what? The Turab. No. Mardawi in his Kitab al Insaf, he said, Was Sahim al Madhab, Ishtirat al Turab. According to the Mardawi, Rahimallah, who is a Hanbali, he said, according to the Madhab, it's strong that the condition of Ta'asan. And that seems to be strong. That it is needed. And now, Walila alhamdulillah, minna, it's found by doctors, Bikhtishafatihim. Their research has told them, and they're looking, that all these other detergents and whatever they've made has, is not able to get rid of huh, the germs that come from the dog's mouth the way that the, that sand can do. And illnesses in which it can remove from the, uh, the sand can remove, nothing else can remove from it except that the sand. It has. Lidalik, if you go to Ahmed Shakir, Rahimahullah, Ahmed Shakir, Rahimahullah, on the ta'aliq that he has on that kitab, Ihkam al Ahkam, Rahimahullah, he brings footnotes and speeches and doctors, things what they've said, and mashallah, very good research he brings on that point. Try to go back uh, to it. Now.